Hey everybody, Tegan here. Tonight I'm going to be taking you through a tour of the night sky in September. So I want to thank you for joining us tonight on High Point Scientific's first episode of What's in the Sky this month. So before we start our tour of the night sky, I want to talk to you about a man who coined the term the Messier Catalog, and it was a French astronomer who was very well known in the 1700s and 1800s. He went by the name of Charles Messier. Now he liked to hunt comets with his four-inch refractor, but if you've ever seen a deep sky object through a telescope, you may notice that it looks fuzzy. He wanted to be sure that he didn't confuse these deep sky objects with comets. So he cataloged the Messier 110. These are 110 deep sky objects that he found that turned out to be not comets. So when you hear the term Messier, for example, Messier 2 or Messier 39, these are all referring to deep sky objects that Charles Messier himself observed early in the 17 and 1800s. So the first target on our list tonight is, in fact, Messier 39. Messier 39 is a beautiful open cluster that's located in the constellation of Cygnus. It's rather bright and you can find it between the star Deneb and the constellation of Cassiopeia. It's bright enough in fact that you should be able to see it with the unaided eye if your skies are dark enough. Otherwise you'll need binoculars or a telescope at the very least depending on how light polluted your area is. So there are a couple of other deep sky objects that I'm going to show you how to find that you can find on any given night in September but there are actually a couple of other objects that are very near to us that are also very spectacular to view in the night sky, and those are the planets. Mars at this point is being completely outshined by the brightest star in our sky, and that's the sun. You will no longer see Mars at sunset, but you can see the other four naked eye planets, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn. Mercury you can see on the western horizon just after sunset, but not too far after sunset because it is pretty low. Venus, on the other hand, is going to continue to shine bright after sunset, and on September 9th will actually be accompanied by a beautiful crescent moon. Jupiter and Saturn are going to dominate the night skies of September. They'll be visible in October as well, but they had just recently passed through opposition in August, meaning they're at prime viewing location. Uranus and Neptune are also going to be visible for the majority of the entire night of September and well into October, you will definitely need a telescope to view both of these planets. Finally, the moon is going to be new on September 6th and it will be a full moon on September 20th. The next deep sky object on our list of deep sky objects is NGC 7000, otherwise known as the North American Nebula. This is a favorite amongst amateur astrophotographers. Within it, you can find the Cygnus wall as well as the Pelican Nebula. But visually, this one's tough to find as it's pretty diffuse. You do need very dark skies to see it with your unaided eye. Binoculars are recommended if you plan on viewing this object. And you can view this object through a telescope, but we highly recommend that you use an O3 filter or a UHC filter. Messier 15 and Messier 2 are both globular star clusters discovered by Charles Messier himself. If you're looking for Messier 15, you will be able to find it just to the right of the constellation Pegasus above the star Enif. If you're looking for Messier 2, you could find it directly below Messier 15 above the constellation Aquarius. You can see both of these deep sky objects under dark skies through binoculars, but if you have the chance to view them through a telescope with a large aperture, some enthusiasts like to refer to these views as diamonds on black velvet. These two objects are nearly as old as the universe itself, sitting at about 12 billion years old. There is one more object that we'd like to mention, and it's a double star system in the constellation Delphinus. This double star system is referred to as Gamma Delphini. These are two stars that are quite bright and visible at 30 times magnification. So if you have a small or an intermediate telescope and are looking to split a couple double stars, we recommend viewing this one. We thank you so much for viewing our first episode of What's in the Sky this month, September edition. If you have any questions, please reach out to our non-commissioned product advisors at High Point Scientific. We will always be more than happy to assist you. Thank you so much and clear skies.